In today's episode of The Insect Hunter, I'm gonna teach you three ways that you can preserve insects and why you may want to do it. Let's get to it. I wanna start off this video by saying that I don't just inherently enjoy going out and killing insects to kill them. I know there are people out there that probably would enjoy doing that, but as a scientist and as an educator, I enjoy keeping them and preserving them over time so that I can teach people about them and also so that I can learn more about them. Because if I take an insect to a specialist that really knows a lot about it, he could look at it if it's well preserved and tell me what it is, a little more about its biology and other interesting clues and hints to help me learn about that insect. So that's why we preserve insects. If we don't do anything to preserve insects, their body will decay and they'll end up looking like this spider, a dilapidated mess that just is hard to tell what it is. If it had been preserved more properly, it could look something like this spider case I made. And I can tell people stories about it, I can show it to people, but this dilapidated, gross, disgusting spider doesn't really serve much of a purpose and it's hard to identify and it doesn't really help other people learn how to identify the species itself. So it doesn't really serve a purpose for us. Like these insects here, these are also properly preserved, so we're not gonna go into pinning and mounting and those things, but I'm just gonna teach you how to preserve them so you can keep them long enough in a state that someone could identify them or pin them um, once they get to them. My favorite method for preserving insects is using a freezer. The best thing about this is that it's super simple and easy to do and anybody can do it. You don't really need any tools to do it. All you have to do is have a freezer and have some jars or containers. Put the insects into the jar or into a plastic bag and then throw them in the freezer and they are good to stay in there for quite a while and they'll be preserved and they aren't going to start drying out super fast. I also really like that this method can be used for just about any type of insect. The Two exclusions would be soft-bodied insects like aphids, caterpillars, things that are soft in general, termites as well. I also would not use this for very small insects because they could dry out very easily. One of the downsides of this though is that they will only stay preserved this way for so long. You can't just leave them in the freezer for years at a time or they'll dry out too much. Another downside to freezing the insects is that you are not going to be able to ship them that easily. Um, I can't just pull something out of the freezer and ship it to someone unless I'm gonna have it in some cool pack or a cooled um, package, which is probably gonna be too much of a hassle. So this is for preserving insects that you wanna just preserve for maybe a couple months and then you're gonna show it to someone or pin it or something like that. But this is my favorite because it's just so easy. Another great method for preserving insects is using alcohol, like rubbing alcohol or similar chemical products that will preserve the insects. And all you need to do is take this and then you can either catch an insect in a jar and then pour it into the jar after the insect's in there, or you can get a jar with alcohol in it and then dump the insects into it. And then basically you just seal it off and shut it and then they should be preserved for quite a long time. The advantage of this method is that this method, if you've got the right chemical there with the insect, it should preserve them for a very long time, for years. And it won't do much damage to the insect unless it's a hairy insect, like a bumblebee with lots of hair. That is not gonna preserve well in this because the hairs kind of get curly and bunched up and do all sorts of weird things. So do not use this for hairy insects or things with scales like butterflies and moths. It just doesn't work outright. So other than those though, I mean, this is the best method for preserving soft bodied insects like caterpillars and things like that. They may lose some of their color, but the key identifying characteristics are usually still there that we need um, and they're preserved properly and they won't dry out this way. Another advantage of this is that it kills the insects almost instantly once they're in there you're done. But with alcohol, you do want to make sure that children aren't just handling it and you don't want to be breathing in the fumes and things like that. So you can see why I like the freezer a little bit more because you don't have to work with chemicals, um, but this does do a pretty good job. 
The third way to preserve insects is by using a kill jar. You can make one yourself by watching the video that pops up here. Or you can purchase one, like this one, which is very nice. Um, basically what a kill jar does and how that works is you put a chemical into here, like uh, acetone, which is basically nail polish remover. You put that in there, and you do not want to be breathing this in, obviously. Adult supervision is recommended. And then you put a paper towel in there. And with the paper towel, that will kind of hold the insect and keep it from getting straight into the moisture because we don't want the chemical straight on it. I'm going to take this little uh, mosquito or midge here and stick it in there. And then I'm going to put the lid back on the jar. And then you're just going to leave the insect in there for a small one like this. Within 30 seconds, this thing should be dead, uh, a minute max. Uh, but with some larger things, it could take up to five minutes. The real advantage with using a kill jar is that you can take this with you out in the field. So while you're out collecting insects or other things, you can preserve them on the spot. Um, which you can do with the alcohol too, but you don't have to be hauling around so many chemicals. You can charge up your jar, you charge up the chemicals before, put the insects in, and it'll stay charged, you know, for an hour or two before all those chemicals in there will dissipate. This method kind of fits somewhere in the middle on the amount of time you have to wait to preserve an insect. And for some insects, like hairy ones, like a butterfly or a moth or a bumblebee, this is the only way you're going to be able to preserve it unless you preserve it in a freezer. You can't do that with the alcohol. Now I have to mention quickly that with a kill jar, you are not actually preserving the insect, you're just killing it and preparing it to be preserved properly. In order to actually do that with this method, um, you're going to have to actually spread it and pin it, which will be kind of a discussion for other videos. But this is a fast way to kill the insect, and it could last, you know, a week or so after you've killed it this way before it starts to get too dry to really handle or manage as someone who wants to look at the insect and identify it. Otherwise, you'll have to rehydrate it, which this video will explain how you would do. So just to wrap up, I want to share a couple tips with you guys. First off, I was showing you this with live insects because those will be the best specimens. That means that the specimens are most likely in really good condition if they're alive. But you can still do some of these techniques if one is given to you that's dead. If someone brings a specimen into me and it's already dead, I can start preserving it from that moment on to make sure that it doesn't degrade any more than it already has. So you can still preserve dead insects. But I'm just showing you with live insects because those are usually going to be the best specimens that you can get. Also, I want to recommend that when you are preserving insects that you label things, especially in the freezer, that way then people know what's going on um, and tell people about it so that they know that you're preserving insects. But once people catch on, they'll get used to it. My wife has. She hates insects. And so have the ladies here in the office. They've figured out that there's the insect zone and there's just going to be bugs in the freezer right next to those ice cream sandwiches. But hey, it's okay. Thank you guys for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe to The Insect Hunter. And leave me a comment if you had a question. I'd like to also know what type of method you guys like to use the most. I'm very partial to freezing just because I like whatever's the easiest. And I don't like to have to spend money. So that's usually the easiest thing for me. But maybe you guys differ in opinion. And stay tuned next time where big adventures start small.